Do you guys remember the days where you could download more RAM? Well, today we're gonna show you how to download more FPS and it's actually real. Yes, this, yes, this. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. And it's, <laughs> and it actually works. It's using a program called Lossless Scaling that you can buy on Steam today, download your computer and get more FPS. Or can you? We're gonna test it in today's video and see if it's actually any good after a word from today's sponsor. Looking for the perfect SSD for your next gaming PC build? Well, today's video sponsor, Team Group, has you covered with their G50 Gen 4 NVMe SSD. This SSD features read and write speeds up to 5,000 megabytes per second, support for DRM caching and SLC caching, and an included graphene heatsink for optimal cooling and easy installations. To learn more about the Team Group G51 terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD and all the other capacities they have to offer with this drive, check the links in the description down below. And big thanks again to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to the video, shall we? All right, guys, so let's talk about Lossless Scaling, a program you could buy on Steam today for $6.99. Long story short, Lossless Scaling is a way to take your lower res running games, like let's say you launch Fortnite at 720p, and scale it up to match your monitor's resolution, while also maintaining the performance benefits of running at a lower resolution. It might sound similar to something like FSR or DLSS, but what this application does is it allows you to do it on the application level, where you can run it on pretty much any game you want. Now this feature has been out for a while, and it has been a popular app that people have downloaded and used on budget PCs, but what makes it interesting in today's video is they added frame generation support, which in theory, not only gives you the performance benefit of running at a lower resolution and upscaling it to the native resolution, it gives you frame gen tech that allows you to add more FPS when you scale up. So let's say you're struggling to get 30 FPS in a game. Even at 720p, you can double the frame rate and go up to 60 using frame gen tech and make what was not a playable experience a much more playable experience on a budget PC. Now we're gonna test this on two computers. This one right here is more of a, what I'd call mid-range gaming PC, but let's do the example of, hey, you got a nice 1440p high refresh rate monitor or even, heck, a 4K monitor and you want to play games at a lower resolution and upscale so you get maximum performance, you can use a system like this with a Ryzen 5 3600 and RX 6700, which we did a full video on already, hit the eye in the top of the corner to check that video out, and you can get even more performance out of it. But there are some downsides. It's not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna really go from running 60 FPS to high refresh rate at a super smooth experience from our testing. It really just helps you get from the, let's say below 60 to 60 or from 60 to 120. Anything beyond that is a absolute mess and we'll show you in later in today's video. But it is free performance in theory. Well, after you pay 6.99. And uh, then we're gonna be testing on this PC, which Jackson's gonna talk about. This right here is a PC from Timu. It was under 300 bucks and it is pretty bad. It is just a Ryzen 3300U and no graphics card. So just Vega graphics. And we found that it has even more limitations because it's not even allowing the PC to go on its max boost. So we're only using 10 watts on the CPU. So it, it was pretty horrible. We couldn't even play a game like Fortnite, honestly. So curious to see if the $7 program will actually make it playable or if it's gonna be somehow worse. So let's go ahead and start testing this PC with some popular titles. We got Cyberpunk, we'll try Warzone. It's not recommended to use this for FPS shooters, but we're going to try because, well, so we do here at the Toasty Bros. And then we'll go to this little PC over here and see if this program actually makes sense for those rocking a really budget computer to get more performance, or if it just makes more sense for the mid-range to maybe even high-end who want to play at 4K and the PC is just not there yet. Okay, so this is lossless scaling, specifically 2.1.1. Now we're gonna go ahead and demo this using the basic scaling mode, uh, which again is basically running a game at 720p or whatever resolution you want to and scaling up to your monitor's res. It doesn't boost the performance all that much. The only benefit you're getting is running that lower resolution and getting that FPS at a scaled up resolution. But then we have the frame generation options here, which as you can see, if you do LSFG, which is lossless scaling frame generation 2.3, you get these modes, times two, times three, times four. For your sake, you really do not want to go beyond times two. Times three, times four makes the FPS numbers really high, especially on higher end systems. And there's more margin of error for those frames that are being generated. Because when you're running at, let's say, 150 to 160 FPS, when normally you'd be running at, let's say, 60 FPS, all those fake frames are gonna really blend together and cause a lot of problems, which you'll see when we run benchmarks. So really for the sake of testing, you want to stay at X2. And that's what we're gonna be focused on when we do also do frame generation on this PC. So we're gonna go ahead and launch 
Cyberpunk. Uh, we're going to turn frame gen off for now just to show you guys how it works. But one important thing is when you launch a game, you need to get in game and run it in window mode. If you're going to scale up, you got to run in window mode. For us, we want a 1440p display, so we're going to run it at 720p. We're going to hit scale up to 1440p and then see what kind of performance we can get. But for baseline, I think the best thing to do is to run it 1440p native so you guys can see what it looks like. Go down to 720p to see the performance gain and then scale back up to show that it actually makes a difference. All right, guys, we're in Cyberpunk running at 1440p higher settings. As you can see, things are lagging. Um, we are currently on high settings. I think we got a little bit of RT going on here. We got some medium ray tracing, which again is very demanding for a 6700. But yeah, ultra high settings and uh, running around here, we're only getting like 20 FPS. It ain't great, not very playable, Ugh, kind of vom inducing if I'm being honest here. So we'll go ahead and drop this down to windowed 720p. We're almost there, there we go. And now let's see what kind of performance we're getting. So as you guys can see right now at 720p, we are getting 68 to 70 FPS. Now we want to upscale this image to full screen. So we're actually, well, looking like we're running at 1440p. But really we're not, we're running at upscaled 720p. And to do so, we're gonna pull up lossless right here. And we have the scaling mode set to auto. Normally don't really wanna change that. We want the scaling type to be LS1. There is some other options like FSR and whatnot, but for the sake of this program, LS1 makes the most sense. And all we're going to do is hit scale, click on the program we wanna scale up, Wait a moment for it to scale up. And just like that, we're scaled up to 1440p. Now I will say it doesn't look as good as native 1440p, but it is scaled up naturally to where we're getting now 60 FPS versus the, well, 30 that we had before. And uh, Jackson, you wanna run around real quick, see if you notice much latency, because that's always gonna be the biggest problem is the kind of latency you will feel when playing a game like this upscaled. No, it feels, feels pretty good in this actually. It seems kind of like a smoother game anyways though. It does look, it, it has the slight Vaseline texture. It does, it's very similar to FSR. And in a game like this, FSR might be more ideal, but sometimes in this, you might actually get more performance than running FSR because you're downscaling really low. I'd probably equate this to, let's say, FSR on performance mode or ultra performance. And so this is one where we can do like the, the two times yes. frame gen. So now if you alt tab out, you can go to frame generation and do, yep, uh, and then times two set to performance. And then you should be able to hit scale. Click on here and now it will display out at two times the frame rate. If you look in the top left corner, the FPS on the right is what you're actually seeing, which it feels it like high refresh rate. It actually rate. looks high refresh right now. And then if you look on the left, it is what it was before at 58. So this is the kind of cool part about it, where if you're running 60 two times, you just got a high refresh rate experience just for nothing running higher settings. One may argue based on how Vaseline it looks that just lowering your settings on a PC like this would make more sense, but this is a way for you to technically run higher settings and get, well, a playable result. There's definitely some people who, who may prefer this over, um, you know, going really low settings. So. Yeah, well, we'll go ahead and do, now that we've shown how this works with frame gen, it's very simple, very simple, easy to work. For $7, for some people, this would be really worth it. Let's try in a shooter title like Warzone. That's where it's gonna be <laughs> a little bit tough because those games, again, rely on fast response times. Jackson plays this game a lot, so it'd be the best way to demo it. And uh, we'll see if he can actually game using lossless in Warzone. All right, guys, it's time. It's time to enter the Warzone. First, we're going all natty. We are running full screen. On, oh my God, extreme <laughs> settings. I don't even think we've ever done this. I don't think I've ever turned on extreme, but we're trying to get worst case scenario here. Yep, max FOV, 165 refresh rate. This is about to go crazy. No, Jackson was mentioning, it, this would make a lot of sense potentially if it worked on eSports titles for those console gamers who have 4K monitors, switch to PC and are like, hey, I can't fully <laughs> use my 4K monitor because I'm running at, let's say, 1440p or trying to even play at 4K and it's like getting good FPS. But as long yeah. as we stay around this like 70 to 80 range, I think it will be a good test because that's kind of what you want to see to double it. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm surprised. It's a little shout out to this build. 1440p too. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I guess shout out to Call of Duty too. You know, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well optimized. Bro. Oh, oh I should have known there'd be another one. So, oh my God, oh, there's, there's three else. of them. All right, so the max, what's the max we've seen? Like 90? 90. And then the lowest has been like 60? Yeah. All right, and now we pull up the rubber ducky. So we're cool with doing uh, scaling and try to double the FPS. Yeah, let's just go and just, let's go crazy. Just do it. Let's get it all in one go. Click. This is like the only game that's been like windowed, but like not tiny. Okay. If you look in the top right, we're getting about 130 to 100 in, yeah, 134 FPS. And I will say, yes, it feels smooth, but I can definitely feel the input. 
I'm curious to see if I can still win a gunfight or two here. Now you might be wondering, again, I don't think we addressed this. You might be seeing 60 FPS here. These fake frames that are being generated through uh, frame generation only can be seen through programs that actually can read it. And MSI Afterburner is one that cannot read the fake frames. So that smoothness we're getting from the extra frames being added is not being reported by Afterburner. This little overlay up here is telling us we're getting about 115 FPS. I will say, if I was playing this competitively, it'd be enough to bother me. I was gonna say, I honestly felt like it was gonna be very, very noticeable. So I'm pretty happy to hear that it's at least playable. There's also no like artifacting or anything, which is cool. Yes. Yeah, I would say one thing to note too is based on the last time we tested this, our CPU usage and temperatures are higher. So I think this does rely on having a decent CPU. So it'll be interesting it'll, it'll to be see interesting. when we test the Timu PC, if that will even help at all. Oh, oh. Lay down! <laughs> what? I'm pressing crouch and it's, okay. Do you need to bring in a celebrity gamer? <sighs> yeah, Jonah, you want to? Yeah, you. You want to? You want to? You want to give it a go? Tell me what you think on this. Uh, loss See, okay. Scaling. Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second. So Jonah is a gamer that. What would you say? Jackson told me many times where he, if he drops below what like 240 no. FPS, he <laughs> feels it. I feel it. It's so I've been playing on 240 for like in plus for so long. So should he should he do four times? <laughs> four, I'm curious what four times will do. <laughs> no, it looks way better. It's. It actually feels a little better too. No, I said to the back. It's <laughs> oh, we got him. Keep going, keep killing. Go, King, go. They have loadout guns already. Damn. Oh. Oh, oh dang. I just got body. <laughs> See, huh. like, th those, like, those quick flings, and whenever you, like, have to really quickly adjust, that's where it gets me, man. Because, like, it's honestly not bad. Like, playing like this right now, especially when you actually got into balanced, but, cause even the milliseconds on like afterburner right now are better. So that extra from the frame generation isn't as bad, but it's still very noticeable. Like, cause it does feel like a high refresh rate experience, but it's like, it's a trade off, you know? So it, it maybe, looks high refresh rate to us, but not the, not the feel of the mouse. Oh, almost got him. Right, yeah, it doesn't feel like high refresh rate, but it looks like it. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a trade off. Sure. Oh, right, right behind you. Like, my tracking is just like abysmal. It's probably because my, my sensitivity is not right either, but you know. I would probably say it's probably not worth it. That's just me, because I'd rather have a more, I, I, I think honestly you can manage with 60 frames to 100 on a shooter like this. Latency is where it gets me. I'd definitely use this for like a, you know, a, like if you're playing like Red Dead Redemption or something. You don't need the high refresh rate. Probably not recommended for AAA titles like this or shooters like this. I just wouldn't do it because it's going to mess yeah, you, you up said, too much. You said not recommended for FPS. Yeah, and, and I see why. Single player I though, I bet it would go pretty hard. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What is this thing going to do? <laughs> Start. <laughs> oh. What, what is that team gonna, with PC going to do? This guy is going to have a problem. So we're going to try Overwatch now. Um, Jackson, I'll show you, you mess with this. Show how easy this program is to use. Uh, so basically, we're in Overwatch right now. And uh, this is, I, I believe, 720p. Uh, we're getting crappy FPS. Yeah, we're just running windowed full screen, which in Overwatch, uh, Matt pointed out, it doesn't really give you a actual resolution. So a little confusing, but I mean, hey, we'll see if maybe the program can still do anything any different. Yeah, I think we're, we're realizing that having a decent CPU still is important. A CPU that's not pinged at 100% the entire time. And uh, you can just go ahead and hit with frame gen. Might as well just see what happens. Yeah. All right, so we get LS1, two point. We'll try to get two times the FPS. Will it even happen? Probably not. So then I click back into it. And then it should just go boop. Whoa. And we're in and oh we're getting. My, dude. Whoa, the, look the at the mouse input delay oh. is insane. And look at the the weird like art. It looks like AI. Like it looks right. like really early on horrible AI where it's trying to generate frames, <laughs> but it's not really helping. And theoretically, it's saying the FPS up here mm. is 44 FPS with the frame gen, but does it really feel any better? It probably feels worse. Yeah, no, it definitely. I mean, looks wise, minus the blurriness, yes. I guess it looks like it's 40 FPS, but it feels so horrible that like I would. I would take the stock gameplay over this any day. Yes. Um, so, yeah, once again, it, I think this just goes to show that there is 
limits to this software. Like if you have a really, really old or just really crappy PC, you're probably better off just honestly going like 480p in the stock or doing a really low render scale, which most of these games like Overwatch, you can lower this down to where it looks pixelated, but at least it's real time. But yeah, for six bucks, 6.99, it's a cool program that exists on Steam that allows you to just mess around with your computer and potentially you could get more FPS out of it. Is it a perfect solution? By our testing, you could tell no, it is not, but it is cool for those who have a budget computer that has a little bit of room for some upscaling tech to potentially get a lot more FPS and have a more playable experience in AAA titles. That was our experiment with loss of scaling. Let's wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking two gaming PCs. Well, I'm going to say one gaming PC and one whatever this is. And as you guys can see, this thing just, there's no way to redeem it. I mean, we put a graphics card in it. We tried loss of scaling. <laughs> Nothing seems to really help it. So as far as APU performance goes, when it's really low end, not the greatest. You might have better luck with like handhelds that are already a lower resolution, but decent PCs, like, you know, maybe the three to $600 range, it is pretty cool. Yeah, especially if you're running these new AAA titles, you got a slightly older graphics card and you're struggling to get 60 FPS, downloading a program for $7 just for the sake of, hey, maybe I could get a lock 60 with a little bit of input lag in the latest AAA titles. I think it might be worth it. Is it perfect? No. Is it a download more FPS tool? Not necessarily, but in theory, you can get some more FPS with frame gen and for seven bucks, I think it's kind of cool. So if you don't buy loss of scaling yourself, check the links down below. Steam doesn't have an affiliate program, but there's a description link down below <laughs> where you can buy this program today and uh, mess around your PC. Let me know if there's any games that you tried with this program that actually benefited from it. And um, yeah, would you use it on your next build? And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Now, if you don't want to worry about loss of scaling, go check out pcbros.tech because we can actually make sure you get exactly what you need <laughs> for money. <laughs> for money at pcbros.tech. He's <laughs> Cook Tozy Bros on checkout. You'll save 3% your next purchase. You'll save money. See you guys later. Come on.